Hello, and welcome to this recorded seminar for English 2327. This seminar recording will cover the main points of getting assistance from the library, finding resource materials through the library's catalog and databases, as well as harvesting source citations, and then lastly, it'll look at the formatting of an MLA-style paper. So, to begin, you're brought here to the main CTC website. The URL is www.ctcd.edu. To get to the library, you can either come here to the Students tab, and then under Student Resources, you can click directly here on Library. Or you can come to the Academics tab, and under Library, you'll see a direct link to the databases, I'll talk a little bit about this Ask a Librarian by email feature a little bit later on, and a bit about our events. But to get to the library, I'll just click here on More Resources. Now there are several ways of getting help from the library. One is you can come in person to the library. You can call us, you can email us, you can text us, or you can chat with us. Um, now, to get to where you can call or email us, uh, if you scroll down here a little bit uh, under About the Library, Contact Us, this is where you'll find our main email address, reference request at ctcd.edu. Our phone number is 254-526 1621. If you're calling from within state, you can use the toll free in state number, and there is also a toll free out of state number. Returning now to the library's main page, uh, the Ask a Librarian feature that normally we would direct you to for emailing us, the form does not send out the information to us. So you do want to use that reference request at ctcd.edu email address. If you're local to the Colleen Fort Hood area, we are following social distancing guidelines. And so our multimedia lab has, out of the 30 positions of um, the workstations, uh, there are only seven available. So what you may want to do is schedule a time and date for when you want to come in to use one of our computers. I'll talk a little bit about this curbside book pickup. Again, this is something for uh, our students that are local to the Colleen Fort Hood area. If I scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that we do have a, an area here for our live chat or text chat. When the library is open, the live chat and text chat are being monitored. Uh, ordinarily, there will be a box in this location that you'd be able to type in a question and get a response back. You can use your smartphone to send us a text message at this telephone number, 254-400-2275. Please note the hours have changed. The fall semester hours are now Monday and Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesdays and Tuesdays from 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Friday, we're only open in the morning from 7.30 a.m to 11.30 a.m. Saturdays we are closed and then Sundays were open from 12.30 to 7.30 p.m. Okay, coming up here about midway on the library's page under library resources we have a number of tools and resources that you can use 24-7-365. The first of these is the video tutorial guides. These are short videos, about three to six minutes in length, uh, that will help you with like searching the library's catalog using MLA. Now the databases video tutorial is a little longer, but it does have an interactive menu feature to it so that you are able to click on the segment that you want to watch and go right to it, that segment or that part of the video. 
If I come here to the library again, and what you'll see right above the video tutorial guides are the research study guides or lib guides. These are topical pages that the library has created. And if I scroll down, you'll see that we have something that is uh, for English literature. When I click on that, there are some tabs across the top here that you may want to look at. This first page will give you general information about the library as well as our hours. Uh, the researching tab will give you information about how to select various types of sources, tips for searching databases, and then some videos that you may want to watch that explain how to do research, uh, beginning of it, how to know if something is a credible website, and so forth. Uh, the books tab will give you a portal to the library's catalog. If there are any textbooks that are held on reserve, it will list those as well. Uh, it will give you featured books from the library's collection, as well as ebooks that you may find of interest for this topic. The databases tab will give you a listing of the databases that are available in this subject. Uh, there's also instructions on how to access the library's databases and again tips for searching the databases. The journals that are available through the library. Uh, these are print magazines and journals that you're free to come into the building and read. And then the internet resources. These are credible websites that the library has found. There's also a guidance here for evaluating a website, uh, but this will give you some reliable uh, places to go on the internet that you may want to uh, explore. And one of the things that we encourage you to explore is the byways, uh, the student publication, and uh, what that is is every year the library publishes through the college the best submissions of written and artistic works. So it can be short stories, plays, poetry, uh, it could be paintings, photography, sculpture, or um, things like jewelry making or metalwork that you've done. And you would just submit it to the library between uh, the beginning of the fall semester through to February and then the best are selected for publication. And the information I believe if you click here on Byways will give you that information for submitting. Uh, the Films and Videos tab, these will either be from the library's Films on Demand database or through YouTube. And then lastly you'll see something here on how to cite. This will tell you why you cite, what you cite, and how to cite. There are links to the APA and MLA Quick Style Guides as well as to the Purdue OWL. There's a video here to help you understand MLA style. The thing to remember is that no matter what style you are using, whether you're quoting, paraphrasing, summarizing, or including statistics, all referenced material needs to have an in-text citation uh, so as to tell your reader what source you were using. And I'll go more into this, but the thing to remember is that each sentence that has referenced material in it must have an in-text citation somewhere in that sentence. Usually it will be at the end. If I come here to the LibGuides main page again and scroll down here a little bit, something that we're doing new this year because of the pandemic, uh, we have our library events calendar. And our events now are live streamed either through Facebook or through YouTube. So you can be anywhere on campus or anywhere in the world and register for one of these sessions and if you've got an internet connection, you'll be able to participate. If you need to know a link to watch a previous um, session or program, you're more than welcome to uh, send an email to us um, up here at reference request at ctcd.edu or you can visit the library's Facebook page or the library's YouTube channel.
If you're an aspiring writer, there is a Writers Guild that you may want to think about joining as well. But these are some of the programs that are going to be coming up. And this is what last year's uh, Byways cover looked like. So it kind of gives you an idea. This is all by student work. Okay, if I come back one more time to the LibGuides main page, and then down here at towards the bottom, there is a seminar on demand. It's a recording of this seminar. And so you're able to click on the link and then watch the video. And then if it's been a while since you have written a paper, uh, you can watch the writing a research paper uh, video. This will take you through the process of when you get the assignment all the way through self-editing and proofreading of your paper. So this is something that uh, you may want to watch as well. Okay, coming back to the library's main page, our research paper review service. This service does two things for you. Um, the first part is if at any time when you're working on your paper that you feel you need to have assistance one-on-one -on -one with a librarian, you can send us an email at teaching.learning at ctcd.edu. What we'll do is we'll set up a time that we can meet either in person, by phone, or virtually either through WebEx or through Blackboard. And we'll work with you to help you um, with whatever problems you're having with your paper. That could be getting started, the thesis sentence, outlines, source citations, uh, working with a particular style. The other thing you're able to do is you can send your papers to us for proofreading at this address. We do ask that the paper be a final draft format of your document and that it be as an attached file in uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll run your document through a grammar checking program and give you a grammar report. We'll also look at your paper for readability, flow, logic. We'll look at the source citations and overall formatting of the paper. And then what we will do is take your paper and put bubbles in the margins so that you have um, information, guidance, direction, where improvements can be made that you can accept or reject as is your pleasure. The turnaround time for the paper proofreading and for uh, reference request emails is within 24 hours. So this is something that we are looking at practically speaking 24-7, 365. So it does not matter if the library is open or closed or if it's a holiday or during a break. You're uh, always going to get a response back from the library within 24 hours. Okay, coming back to the library. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the catalog, but before I do that, I'm going to do one step here. Our Films on Demand database uh, prefers to have the connection made through the library's web page. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come to the Databases tab and click on that and then come to the General Resources tab. This opens up a listing of general resources and I'm going to click on Films on Demand. Now the first time you log on to our databases you'll come to this page, the Online Database Login page. The instructions for logging in are given right here. Your username will be your lowercase c followed by the first seven digits of your CTC ID number. Your password will be your first and last initials in capital letters followed by your six digit birth date. And so let me go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, you can now close these two tabs. Um, you can close the tab here and return to the library's main page and then come to the catalog. And 
Uh, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this demonstration is I'm going to use the short story Young Goodman Brown. So I'm going to type in Young Goodman Brown. You can see I don't have to type in all of the title and the catalog will do a type ahead. So you'll see things like Young Goodman Brown, Symbol, Heart of Darkness, um, information by uh, the about Nathaniel Hawthorne, maybe the dream that young Goodman Brown had. So what I can do is I can click on any of these topics and have that execute my search. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to click on the first one, young Goodman Brown. And this brings up a little more than 5,000 results. Now what I'm able to do, if I scroll down here a bit, you'll see where it says format. And I can click on show more and this will tell me that I have one e-video and that's it right here. There is a film adaptation to the video. If I click on view now, this will take me to the film adaptation. And there are some segments that are given here. And if you look down, you'll notice that there's also a couple of segments for like Hawthorne's literary career, some historical background about the Salem witch trial hysteria of 1692, and then something called Satan's speech and romanticism. You can also click on the transcript and uh, read the transcript and follow along as the video is being played. And this is helpful if you're in a situation where if you don't have sound because of the background that you're in or maybe it's late at night you don't want to disturb anyone, you can read along as the, the program plays. You can also download uh, the transcript to a PDF file and save that to your computer. Right below the video screen, you'll see the site tool that you can click on. And this is where you can begin building your works cited list. So what I'm going to do is highlight everything here and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it directly into a document. Now I'm going to do a little bit of pre-formatting for my document. I'm going to come up here to my first page I'm going to highlight everything. Now the first thing I'm going to do is highlight um, and change the font to be Times New Roman size 12. And I'm going to do that by just right mouse clicking. Come down here to font and then put in Times New Roman size 12 and then down here where it says set as default, I have two options. This document only or all documents based on the normal template. Uh, this second option, what that does is every time you open up Microsoft Word, it will default to Times New Roman size 12. So you don't always have to be changing it every time you enter it. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it at this document OK only and click on OK. The other thing I'm going to do is set the spacing. The spacing for my entire paper is double. So I'm going to right mouse click and come down here to paragraph and choose underline spacing double and then say OK. That will set my spacing throughout my entire paper. If I come down here you'll notice that this is now double spaced. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm building my works cited list. The works cited sources will be listed in alphabetical order by the author's last name or by the title. They'll also be in what is known as a hanging indented paragraph format. And the way to do this is just to right mouse click, come down here to paragraph, and up here where it says special, I've got two options, first line and hanging. For the purposes of the works cited list, you'll choose hanging and then say OK. And this will put this into that hanging indented style. And you can see where it gets its name because everything is hanging off of that first line. Now I do need to make some corrections here. First of all, the on is needing to be in lowercase. 
The other thing, this is the name of the database, Films On Demand, and the name of the database comes after the publication date. The URL that you're seeing here is the generic URL from the database. And what you want to use is uh, the URL up here at the top of your screen. This is sort of a permalink that will allow you to click on the URL and go back to this uh, video. So I'm going to copy this and paste this in just like that. Now, a word about the accessed date that you're seeing here. MLA says the access date is needed when you're dealing with an electronic resource that is volatile or that does not have a publication date. Everything that you'll get through the library's databases will be stable and will have uh, a publication date. So I can just delete that and hit the enter key and I'm ready to uh, receive my next source citation. So I'm going to minimize this. I can close this screen. Now I'm going to come here to the print book option and narrow this down. And what this gives me will be a listing of print books. Now for those of you who will watch this video that are in the uh, immediate Killeen, Fort Hood area. Um, what you can do is use our curbside service. And what you'll do when you see something like, this is Nathaniel Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown by Harold Bloom. It's an interpretation book. So what you're able to do is come here and click on Save. And then you'll notice up here where it says My Items. And it tells me that there's one item in my list. If I come down here a little bit, if I need, say, um, a literary criticism, I can click on the title of a book and then click on View Description. This will tell me what kind of information is going to be in the specific book. It may also give me a summary that I can use. Now, for those of you who are out of the uh, Killeen Fort Hood area. There is another little option that you have down here in that CTC is a global community college. Our catalog is also global. So you're actually able to put in a city, state, zip code, or country and find other libraries that are in your area. For instance, if I come here and put in, say, London, England, and click on the search button. This tells me that in the close proximity of London there are several libraries that have this exact same book by Terence Martin about Nathaniel Hawthorne. Some of the little points that you'll find here is there's a map to show you where the library is located and when you see the um, library's name or the college name in blue. This is a hot link, so you're actually able to search that library's catalog for other material if you're in that area. If I come back here to uh, put in a zip code, this one is in the um, Northern Virginia area. And you can see there are a number of libraries, so I can put in a zip code too for a specific area. So that's how this will work. Uh, what I can also do is then take this one. I'm going to add this one to my saved list. I have one here, Hawthorne's Fiction, The Light and the Dark. I'm just going to add that. When I think I've found enough uh, print items, again, this is something that you can use uh, for those of you who are using our curbside service. You can come here to where it says My Items and you'll see where it says Email. You can pick and choose which items you want from your list. And up here in the email address, what you'll enter will be 
the library's email address reference request at ctcd.edu. If you want to put in your personal email address, what you can do is put a comma and then have your email address right after that. And this way you have a copy of what you sent to us. And then down here in the subject line, what you'll need to put in is the wordings curbside pickup and then the Young Goodman Brown is basically something for your benefit rather than ours. But in the body of the message you'll put in your name, your full 14 digit CTC ID number, uh, your phone number so that we can call you to let you know that the books are ready to be picked up. And if you want to give us your email address as well, that's fine too. But what we need specifically are these elements. And the reason for asking for your full 14 digit ID is we use that to bring up your record in our circulation system so that we can check out the books to you and then have them ready for you to pick up. Uh, if you do not know what your CTC full digit full 14 digit number is, you'll find it on the front of your photo ID or you probably will be able to find it through Web Advisor or through Blackboard. But this will be um, what we need from you. And then you'll click here on Share List. Now if it's the first time that you're doing this, what you'll find will be like a series of photographs that will say, I'm not a robot, click on all the pictures that have bicycles in them, and then say OK. Once you've established that you're not a robot, you can click here on OK, and you're good to go. The other thing you're able to do is right here where it says Cite. You can use this citation feature, and then come down here and select MLA 8th edition, and you can get a batch of the source citations for the books on your list. And then you can copy those and then paste them directly into your document. And when I do this, watch what happens to the font and the line spacing. You'll notice that the first listed title by Richard Vogel is single spaced. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse over to the right and merge the formatting. And you'll notice that it merges the formatting so that it is in that same double spaced hanging indented format. And so all I have to do now is take this information and put it in alphabetical order so that I have it. And then just put this up here. And this maintains my alphabetical order for my work cited. If I see an extra little space there, I just delete that. And now I have uh, three print books and I have a video, all from the catalog. Then click here, come down, and I'm ready to receive my next source. I can close this and I'll just delete my items and return to the catalog and then delete the print. And then what I can do now is I can look at ebooks. Now sometimes I'll have things like this. This is um, Young Goodman Brown by Nathaniel Hawthorne. This is the actual uh, tale rather than a literary criticism. And then what you'll find as you go through here, you'll have um, our various ebooks. Now, sometimes it's a good idea to take a look at what you're looking at here. For instance, um, like this one here, Damned Women, Sinners and Witches in the Puritan New England. Uh, what I recommend doing is click on the title to see what database this is coming from. Here's why. Every so often something goes a little bit sideways with the catalog and our databases. And what may happen um, if I click on the view ebook, this should take me to the EBSCO ebook subscription and have this particular ebook available. However, what will happen is this. 
is it's going to tell me that it did not find it. So what I can do with that is I can actually take this at title and maybe go into the EBSCO database directly through the, uh, through the database's page and then see if I have that particular title. Let me just come here and see if that is indeed the case. And basically what I'm going to do is just paste in the title and take out the publisher and information. Um, hang on a minute. Take this information here. Let's do that again. Okay, and let's see if indeed what we got. And for some reason this book is not available. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. It can happen. If it does, please let us know so that we can make that uh, note with the catalog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to this one here. Um, this one is in our ebook um, Central Academic Complete. When I click on View ebook, this will bring up the ebook central for this particular book. Now ebooks are accessible 24/7, 365, unless somebody checks it out. And you can check out a book by downloading it. You can also read it online. What's also nice is this particular one uh, does not seem to have any limitations. Normally, ebooks will have a limitation of 21 days that you have. Uh, access to it on your computer on the 22nd day it goes poof it disappears off your computer there may also be other limitations to the number of pages that you can download or um, copy but what's nice is that with all of our databases uh, you'll be able to get uh, the source citation for this you just click on the cite tool and then you're able to copy and paste this directly into your document. And again, I am maintaining my order. Uh, the one thing you have to watch out for ProQuest databases, they're very good about formatting the source citation, with the one exception that they do not italicize the name of the database. So what you'll do is just highlight that and then italicize it, and you're good to go. Okay, so now we have several print books, um, an ebook, a video. Let's pick up, uh, let's go a little bit more into the ebook. If I come down here, you'll have a description of the ebook and then the table of contents where it says show subsections. You just click on that link and it tells you what you have. So you can click on even more information about. Um, maybe a biography of uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne. And it will take you to the first page of that section. Now this particular uh, ebook database allows you to search within the book. Now because I am searching for Young Goodman Brown, what I'm going to do is put a quote mark and then type in Young Goodman Brown and the reason for doing this is this tells uh, the search mechanism to look for that specific string and then I just come here and click on search. This tells me there are 38 results for Young Goodman Brown within this book and it will take me to the first uh, section where I'll find that information. You'll notice these purple lines the longer the line, the more information. So when I click on the little down arrow, it will take me to where it finds Young Goodman Brown. You want to make a note up here of the page number because of what you're able to do with the copy function. If you see something that you think is going to be credible, uh, you can copy and paste it into like a Word document or a note card. And so up here what you have is your quote 
and then basically you refer up here to where it says page 26. So just put the P and then 26. And then it gives you the source citation. Now you don't need the created date, so you can get rid of that, but this is something you would be able to then copy, say into a sticky note, a OneNote, or into a document, and build like uh, a little bit of note cards for yourself, electronic note cards, and then just say done when you're finished. The icons up here, this is your full book download, your chapter download, again your copy, the printer icon prints a page or range of pages to a PDF file. You can get the permalink as well as the source citation. And that's how you would access material through an ebook. Coming back now to the library's catalog, I'm going to take off the ebook limiter. We're going to look at articles. So if I click on articles, I can then limit this to full text. And if your professor says that the articles need to be peer reviewed, you can limit it by that as well. And then what you'll see down here is if you want to limit it by publication year. Most of the time you will not need to do that. But what you're able to do is, for instance, Young Man, Young Goodman Brown by, and the Mathers. When you click on the article title, this will tell you what database this is coming from. And JSTOR is good to search for literary criticisms. And so I'm going to click on View Full Text. And this will take me right to the document. And then I'm able to download the PDF directly to my computer. I can also come here to where it says Cite This Item and it will give me like MLA APA Chicago. I can copy this and then paste it directly into my document. Now you'll notice that this the author's name is in all capital letters. This needs to be changed to upper and lower case. So I'm just going to change the case to capitalize uh, the name. Now again I don't need the accessed date and I can then hit the Enter key and continue. So this gives you JSTOR and you can read this again in full screen or you can view a larger version of it. If I come back to the catalog, um, this particular one, uh, the lacrimal imagery in Hawthorne's Young Goodman Brown, um, a tip with some of the databases here that we have. Um, I know from experience that when I click on the view full text uh, that you see this button here. It is going to go to academic search complete. It goes to the first listed one and it gives me some funny results. So if you see something like that, come back to the catalog, bring up the, the uh, the detailed record and then look for something that says like humanities full text because this will deal with literature and when you click on the view full text link it will take you to um, the database and if I click on the title this will give me some information about the article. It may give me uh, keywords. It may also give me an abstract. Now the HTML article format will look like this. This is what that looks like. It does not have page numbers, but this particular article is also available in PDF uh, format. PDF gives you the article the way it appeared in print. And for this, what I can do is I can use it for my in-text citations. MLA says that if you have access to the page numbers for your article that you're citing from, you need to provide that for your in-text citation. And from what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to where it says email. I'm going to email this to myself. And then in the subject line, I'm going to put in some information that tells me what I'm getting and then over here where it says citation format I'm going to click on that little dot click on the down arrow and then come down here to where it says MLA and then tell it to send 
and then continue. And let me bring up my email. Now, for those of you who are wondering about our curbside service, this is what the library will see. It will have your name, the full 14-digit CTC ID number, your phone number, and your email address if you provided it. But it will give us the author title and the call number for each book that you've put on your list. And then the article that I just emailed to myself, there's the attached article. I have a work cited and then I have the HTML version of the article right after. And what I can do then is I can take this and copy it and paste it directly into my paper. I'm going to put this up at the top and pick up the works cited information. And this I'll just take that and unbold it, center it. Now, a couple of things that you can do that may save yourself some um, bit of work a little later on is EBSCOhost is a platform for about 24, 25 different databases. And so it's kind of handy to know which one of those databases it came, your article came from. So what I have from here, if I go back into my folder, or to my results. This is telling me this is coming from the humanities full text. I'm just going to copy that and paste it right after EBSCOhost. And then unbold it, but leave it um, italicized. And then put the comma after the name of the database. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this information down here. This is the persistent link or the permalink for this article. I'm going to copy that and then paste it over the generic URL that I'm given. And that will help find this article again much easier. And then just take out the part that I don't need and then put this down here in front of Vogel and there's my list. So just from the catalog you can see I've grown quite a bunch of sources from my index for my um, works cited list. Okay. So that is using the catalog to find materials. Now let's go into the databases because there are a couple that may be of use to you. I'm going to click here on library links and then come down to databases. And this will take me to the databases page directly. I'm going to click on literature and then I've got a couple of options here. I have the EBSCO Literary Reference Center this is an EBSCO platform, but it is not included in the regular EBSCO host databases like the um, Academic Search Complete or Business Abstracts. But it does work on that same platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Young uh, Goodman Brown. And I just click on Young Goodman Brown and tell it to search. This will give me um, a number of like literary criticisms, reference books, biographies, plot summaries. If I want literary criticisms only, I can click on that and that narrows down my results to 32. And so I have um, like this one here, Young Goodman Brown, Hawthorne's Devil in Manuscript, a rebuttal. This is a PDF article. And I can just click here on the folder and add it to a folder. Then I have this one here, Young Goodman Brown. And I can click on that. And then, so I've got three, three articles here that I can, I've added to my folder. And then you can batch email items from your folder, either from the folder view or up here by the folder. 
and then you can select which articles you're wanting then come over here to the email icon put in your email address and this is going to be uh, Young Goodman Brown and then choose my citation format and tell it to send and then what will happen is I'll get my articles here. I want you to pay attention to something. Each PDF file is sent under separate cover. However, you'll notice out of three articles I have a fourth email that does not have a paper clip and what EBSCO does very nicely is it gives you a batch work cited listing and so what you're able to do is you can copy all of this information. If there's any HTML format it will follow after this as well. I can take that then and then copy it directly into my document. And I'm not going to go and do the um, editing as far as putting in the um, database or the additional information as far as the permalink just in the essences of time. But what I can do is I can take this and then put this up here and my work cited list is still in complete uh, order and then one last database that I want you to be aware of is this one here the Gale Literary Sources or the Gale Literature Resource Center either of these two but uh, the Gale Literary Sources is probably a very good one and if I type in Young Goodman Brown again I get a type ahead I'll just choose this first one and what I'll have now are 48 articles that are literary criticisms I have biographies uh, topic and work overviews reviews primary sources and literary works if I need to limit it by peer-reviewed there is an option to do that as well and that brings my I literature criticism down to six and so what I have now is like Young Goodman Brown's Evil Purpose Hawthorne and the Young Yin Shadow and uh, this is actually from the Journal of Evolutionary Psychology and there's the article and what's nice about this is that the end of the article you'll have the source citation it defaults to MLA and you can then copy this and paste that directly into your paper and again I don't need the accessed date for this particular item and if I come back here what I want you to notice up here at the top is you can get the article and upload it to Google Drive or OneDrive. You can email it to yourself. You can download it to your computer or print it out. What's nice about HTML is you can translate the article. You can increase or decrease the font size or you can listen to it and have it play the information to you. And it will do a read along for you. So that's how you find information from our databases. And you can see it's very easy to then build your works cited list um, from what the library has to offer. Now, there's a reason I use, I create the works cited list first. It's because it will give me the information I need for my in-text citations. If I've got something that has like an et al after the author's name, it will tell me et al. Um, if I have something that does not have an author, it will give me the format that I need to use for that as well. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to format my MLA style paper. The first thing you're going to do is put in the header. You come up here on the ribbon and click on insert. Come over to header. And then choose the first blank. Um, option. Then tab over to the right. This will be where you type in your last name 
hit the space bar once, and now you need the page number. The page number icon that you see here, if you want to put the page number in first, that's fine. Just make sure that you don't have anything typed here first. If you do, probably the best thing to do is to come here to Quick Parts, come down to Field, and then scroll down to where it says Page, choose your page number format, and then say OK. That'll put your page number right after your last name. Now because I set my default font 2 times New Roman size 12 at the very outset, the font up here in the header is already formatted. Otherwise I would have to highlight this and then change the font. So I'm good to go with that. I'll just close my header. Now I need to type in my identification information. This will be where you type in your name your professor's name, the course, and this is English 2327, and then the date, and it's always in day, month, year format. You always spell out the month, then hit the enter key once, center, and then this is where you type in the title of the paper. And the title of the paper should reflect the subject of your paper. Not that it says writing assignment number five or literary criticism. The reader that picks up your paper may not know what you're talking about otherwise. And the thing to think about is it may not be the reader today, but maybe the reader 3,000 years from now, the archaeologist that finds your paper and wants to know what your paper was dealing with. So this is just something to keep in mind. Then hit the Enter key and then return to left justification. Now MLA says that the uh, first line of every new paragraph is indented one half inch from the left margin. You can use the tab key on your keyboard. However, if you don't reach up high enough, you'll hit the caps lock key and then you're typing in all capital letters. But there's a nice way of doing it so that it is automatic. What you're going to do is do a right mouse click, come up here to paragraph, and then this time under special, use the first line function and then say OK. This moves the mouse cursor over one half inch and then all you have to do is begin typing. You don't worry about hitting the enter key because the computer will take care of the carriage return and line feed for you. When you're ready for a new paragraph just hit the enter key and it will tab in just like that. Okay, so that's how you format an MLA style paper. Now let's talk about in-text citations. In-text citations, when you come to the works cited list, um, they act as pointers to your works cited list. So all you really need is maybe just the author's last name. You don't need to put in all of this information. You don't need to go and put in um, in the book Hawthorne's Wilderness by Mariana and then however this name is pronounced I will not slaughter the person's name but all of this information here you don't need to do. All you need is the author's name so this will just be um, her name. I'll just copy this and your in-text citation will take this format. Parentheses the author's name, a space, and then the page number. And that's all you have to do for it. This tells your reader where to come on your works cited list. If you have something that has two authors, which this one does, none of these are two authors or any et al, uh, you may find that you add the et al if there are, um, if that exists after your author's name. Now in this case we have a title. Uh, we have Nathaniel Hawthorne. What MLA says when you have a title but no author, you use the first one to three words of the title. So since there is, uh, there are not any other titles here beginning with Nathaniel, all I really need to do is take 
the first name, Nathaniel. I could use Nathaniel Hawthorne, that's perfectly fine. But this will also tell me that I need to put in the quote marks because this is um, a video. And so what I'll do is for this one, it will look like this. Oops, I did not. Let me do that again. Every so often my mouse just does not pick up on things. There we go. And paste that in. Put in the close quotes and close parentheses. Now, MLA says if you don't have the page numbers, don't worry about it. Just put in either the title or the author's name. If you have access to the page numbers, you need to supply those. So that's how you'll format in-text citations. Now, in-text citations, generally speaking, will come at the end of the sentence that contains referenced material and before the period. So it's just something to keep in mind. If I come back to the library's main page, under library resources, you'll see a link here for citation resources. This is where you'll find the citation resource tools. And the primary one that you may want to use is the Purdue Online Writing Lab or the OWL. When you click on the OWL link, you're going to use the one on the right because uh, the one over here is for people that attend or are affiliated with Purdue. So this is the free version and then just come down to where it says MLA guide and then click on formatting and style guide and then you'll see some hot links over here on the left. The uh, in-text citations, the basics link will show you how to do in-text citations. It will give you information for one author, two authors, no authors, um, so it'll tell you what you need to do for that. Um, if you have quotes, and this is very important because with a literary criticism you will have quotes, uh, the thing to remember is that when the quote is in the body of the sentence but not at the end, the in-text citation will come immediately after the close quote mark and before any punctuation. Um, and then if you have a long quote, anything that is longer than four lines in length, you'll need to set that as a block quote and this will show you how to do that. Now the difference between a block quote and a regular quote is this will be all indented one half inch, there are no quote marks around it, and the in-text citation comes after the period of your quote. So this is what that will look like. Now the library has taken the information from the Purdue OWL and created a quick style guide that you can uh, copy, download at your pleasure. This will give you the general formatting guidelines for the paper, uh, general information, some samples of in-text citations, as well as some work cited. And it will give you the formula to follow as well as some live examples of uh, work cited. And again, it does give a, the email address, this teaching.learning at ctcd.edu email address that you can write to us and say, hi there, how do I do this? Or you, again, you can send it to a reference request uh, at ctcd.edu and we'll be happy to help you with that. And that concludes uh, this recorded seminar for English 2321. Now, if you are taking this as part of a course assignment and you need to have the credit for attending uh, the seminar, in the message that you will have received uh, with the link to this um, recording, you will need to request the post-seminar survey link and You'll need to take that survey in order to authenticate your having watched the recording. If you're just watching it for uh, the purposes of getting your information, you don't have to worry about it. But this is for people that um, 
need to have the seminar as a course requirement, you request the seminar, the, the post seminar survey once you're finished and uh, we'll see your results and be able to authenticate your attendance that way so you get credit for attending. Uh, but that ends the uh, seminar and we do look forward to seeing uh, your papers and hearing from you if you've got questions at any time. And thank you for viewing this recorded seminar for English 2327.